behind me 2012 Toyota Sienna, we're gonna be replacing the rear wheel bearing and hub assembly. Let's get started. First thing we wanna do is jack the vehicle up, put it on jack stands, and we'll pull the tire off. First thing you wanna do is pull off the axle nut. Cause if we can't pull off the nut, we can't proceed. Depending on where you live, you can spray this with a penetrant like the night before and get it good and soaked. But here, we don't need it. You'll notice the nut is dented into this notch on the axle. You wanna undent that. You might be able to use a screwdriver. I made this tool here and it's just gonna get in and we'll pop it up. Just like that. The axle nut is a 30 millimeter 12 point socket. It has to be a 12 point or it won't work. I'm gonna be using an impact to buzz mine off. If you do not have an impact, you can use a pry bar in between the wheel studs and that'll lock it in place. There we go. Let's move on to our brake caliper. We'll take a flat bladed screwdriver, put it in between the caliper and the rotor, and we'll pull towards us. Just a little bit. That'll give us some slop in our caliper and it'll slide back on the rotor easier when we're finished. Now we're gonna take off the caliper and the bracket as one assembly. There are two 17 millimeter bolts in the back holding it on. All right, crack that one loose, get the bottom one. All right, I'll finish it off with my electric ratchet. Now we can set this whole assembly aside. I'm gonna use a caliper hanger to suspend it, but some wire or zip tie will work just the same. Now we can pop off our rotor. We're gonna tap on it with a hammer, cause some vibration, and that'll break it loose from the hub. There we go, didn't take much. Now's a good time to inspect our parking brake shoes. These look really good. Let me show you up top, we have our wheel speed sensor to unbolt. Our wheel speed sensor is a 10 millimeter. I'll just take a screwdriver and tap this sideways, that'll break it loose. There we go, we'll tap it back. All right, so now we know that it's loose. I'm gonna tap it one more time so we can get something under it. There we go, get some under it, pop up, and it's out. Let me just set that aside. Now let's take off our hub nuts. Forgot to show you this earlier, but we wanna make sure that our axle can move freely within our hub. So we'll tap on it with a hammer. If we have to hit it too hard, we wanna put the nut back on. There, just until we're flush. And now we can hit on it a little harder without damaging our threads. All right, it's going through. That's all we need to know. We'll pop this back off. You'll notice in the front of our hub, we have four open holes and then a notch here. We wanna make that notch up. And now our four holes will give us access to our four nuts holding our hub on. The 17 millimeter. From here, you may be able to hit it with a hammer on this rim and pop it out, but we're gonna use a slide hammer. This is an adapter, it goes over our wheel studs. We'll just use our lug nuts. And you should be able to rent these from the auto parts store if you don't own one. We'll screw on our hammer. Let's go in as far as we can. Now it is possible that our whole backing plate will wanna pop out with it. That's because those same four nuts that hold on our hub also holds on our backing plate. Let's see what happens. This is in there pretty good and the slide hammer is not working. So let's try a different method. Pop these off. Tap this through a little more. There we go. Now I'm just gonna hit on this rim and see if it'll start separating. Not yet, I'm gonna hit from underneath. Whew. This bad boy is seized in there. Now that we beat it around some, I'm gonna put the slide hammer back on. Well, now that this has popped off completely, let me show you how to take advantage of that. Usually this is not this hard, so I'm glad I'm filming. So you can see one that's really stuck in. I'm gonna pull off the slide hammer. So we're gonna reposition our brake caliper. Let me move you over here. We have a 10 millimeter bolt holding our brake line on that off and that'll give us just a little more flex on our brake line and then right down here we want to pop this off with a screwdriver just hit on it with a screwdriver from underneath there we go 
perfect. Okay, now we can tip this over upside down. Let's set this in a better spot so it doesn't get in our way. Okay. What we can do now is tap on it from the backside and drive it out. See if this is any easier. Let me find a block or something to set this on. All right, what do they say? Desperate times call for desperate measures. I have this suspended on a couple of blocks. A few things we want to be careful of is our brake line, our brake hose, and these studs here. So when we're hitting with the hammer, you just want to be cautious. See what this does. Oh my goodness. Why is this so hard? Wow, we got it. While we have it in this easy to work with position, we'll go ahead and clean out our hole. I like using a drill with a wire brush. All right, nice. And now we'll apply a little bit of anti-seize. Just rub it around. Nice. We can even put it on this backing if we wanted to. That's not as important. We also want to clean off this surface up here. Just make sure it's going to lay flat when we put it all back together. Just going to blow this out real quick. Well, now I'll scoot you back. We'll put this back on. And if we damaged our parking shoes, we'll go ahead and replace those. All right, we'll move our caliper again. Just so it's out of our way. You can just hold it really. Put this on. All right. So our brake line got a little deformed. Not too bad. Put this through, just like that. Put our retainer back on. Nice. Tap it down. Perfect. We'll move this on a little closer. Move this aside. All right, there we go. Put this bolt in here. That'll just be good and snug. All right. And back you up just a smidge. They want a little bit of anti-seize on our axle splines. Not on our threads, just on our splines. Those birds are loud. Let's rub it around. There we go. We'll get our new wheel hub and you'll notice there's the wider ones and then the narrower ones. Wider ones go on top. Slide it through, push it in. We might have to push on the back a little while we push on the front as well. There we go. Spin this around. Perfect. I'm gonna be able to tap just a little on the front. There we go. Get to some threads over here. Perfect. All right, I got two corners in. I'm gonna suck them down just a little to give me more threads on the other two. Before we do that, we just wanna make sure nothing's in between. Our ABS wheel speed sensor's not in the way. Everything looks good. So we'll just suck it down just a little. There we go. Now we got threads for the other two. All right, we can suck it down all the way. Nice. All right, just look around, make sure it's all seated in. Looks good, now we'll torque it up. These are torqued to 66 foot-pounds. We'll go across, up and then across. All right, throw our axle nut on. This is torqued to 217 foot-pounds. We put a pry bar in it to get us that torque, and then we'll relock the nut. Spin this over, just tap this back down. Doesn't have to be in there deep. Just a little indent, we'll lock it from backing up. Then we'll throw a rotor on. There's a little grommet for adjusting our parking brake. We want that to match up with this notch in our hub. There we go, it goes on. Let me move you around and we'll put on our caliper. Bring our caliper around. Now if our pads slid out, we'll just slide them back in. Get a little screwdriver, just pop them right back in place, just like that. Slide it over our rotor, perfect. Get our lower one on, there we go. Get our upper one on, nice. Before we forget, when I was looking back there, I noticed we didn't have our wheel speed sensor back on. We'll just put that in the hole. Make sure that there's nothing on the tip of it. Wipe it off, put it in the hole. And we'll just put that bolt back in. Just good and snug. Doesn't have to be too tight. We want to get it off in the future. And these are torqued to 58 foot-pounds. All right, that's it. We're ready to put our tire back on and take it for a test drive. Wow, that was a challenge. 
but we got it. Anytime you have to go beyond the manual, you just have to assess the situation and see which route you can take. I'm sure there's more than one way to get a seized wheel hub out of this vehicle, but there's one way you can do it. Because we compressed our caliper piston in just a little, we wanna go ahead and pump up our brakes before we put it in drive for our test drive. And that's it. I'll have a link in the description for the parts and tools used. If you have any questions, comment, post down below. We'll see you on the next one.